Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the waves are definitely higher than the windows. Oh, yeah, look at that. Females are significantly bigger than males and they're counter shaded a bit like penguins, so darker on top and lighter underneath and usually have quite a nice spotty marking. So this fresh water comes over the surface and it freezes at a much higher temperature. This ice then acts as an insulating layer for the rest of the water. The Antarctic Peninsula is a very active glacial place, um, more than 400 glaciers, um, depending on how you count them, I guess. Um, nearly all retreating here, um, but this year we've had a large snowfall, all, all year pretty much, um, which is atypical for Antarctica. Um, it usually averages out about two centimetres of, of snow a year across the entire continent, but a lot of that is on the peninsula because it's a warmer maritime climate and it just gets dumped. Uh, with snow from the South Pacific and yeah. other systems through the um. Into the mouth 
and then the teeth at the back act like a sieve and the crow gets stuck at the back and that's how they feed on. The risk of tsunamis here is, is, is real, um, and that's why we're going to ask you to stay no lower on the beach than the snow line. That gives you two or three metres worth of wave uh, should anything happen. I bet you'll hear it before it. This is the Aurora Channel, and um, we've got Ranger Island to the west, Hooverville looks like it's been like a muffin cut in half to the north, and then to the right here to the east, we've got the Antarctic Peninsula. And this is the Danko coast. Uh, so the coastline here and the island named after Emil Danko, uh, who died of heart problems and scurvy on Gerlache's expedition. Uh, that just came down the once, didn't plan to winter, ended up wintering, and it all went wrong, uh, effectively. Um, and uh, we'll hope to tell you more, a bit more about Gale Ash at recap tonight. But this coastline is just it's one of my favourites. Big up peak there, beautiful, it's a spiky one. Um, and there was a, a, an attempt by the British in the, in the 40s and 50s to chart and map the entire peninsula, and they did that from offshore islands. So they, they would typically come, build a hut, send teams of dogs and men over in the very late winter, early spring, so September, October is good travelling time, August maybe for weather's not too bad. Because they can travel from here, where the ship could drop them off, to there, where the ship couldn't drop them off. So they built their little bases on islands, and then they would travel over the sea ice, try to find the route up, and uh, map and chart the peaks. Which, and they did that successfully all the way along the peninsula. And this was the one place they couldn't find a route up, and you can see why. It's just ridiculous terrain. Um, so they had to uh, travel by boats from here. And the base was abandoned a couple of years after it was built. There wasn't any point in wasting time here.
<laughs> that's, that's, that could be snow that fell 10,000 years ago. Yeah. Wow. wow. So the opposite me, facing the north, is King George Island. And the glacier to the left, the bluish glacier, is actually where you were, uh, your turnaround point was. You were viewing it from the other side, uh, from the west side, at the end of the marathon, turnaround point. And um, that's all fed by this massive ice cap on King George that extends along to the bluff there. And that's the point that we'll sail around tonight as we leave, heading across the glacier.